In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a 3D camera to add realistic movement into your shots, whether that's for transitions, zooms, detail, emphasis, whatever you want to use this for. It's a really cool effect, so check this out. We're going to start with this footage of the T6i that I shot with a T6 way back in the day. It's loaded with effects and stuff, so we might be a little bit laggy today, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. What we're gonna do is, so that we don't ruin this, we're gonna add in an adjustment clip out of our effects menu in our toolbox. So we'll go ahead and drag that on top of our clip and make sure they match in length. So you can see that nothing happens to our clip and all of the adjustments we're gonna be making are gonna be in this clip right here. So we're gonna open this up inside of Fusion. And now that we're here, we would normally want to select a tool or something, but everything we're gonna be using for this tutorial is in these palettes right here. Most of them are in just this 3D palette on the right side. So we're gonna go ahead and close this spline menu so it's a little bit easier to see. And then we're gonna grab our media in number one right here, and we're gonna add an image plane to that. So this is gonna move this image into a 3D space as kind of like a movie screen if you were to go to the movies. And from there, with image plane selected, we're gonna add a 3D camera, just like that. I like to pop this merge up a little bit that it makes automatically, and then put camera right above it, like this. And then what we need to do is click on merge, and now we'll add a renderer 3D, and now we'll add just a regular merge right there. So we'll drag this one into our line here by holding shift while we move it and then let go of shift, it should lock in. And then we'll take that renderer 3D and run it right into this merge. And nothing looks like it happened, but something has. If we click on image plane 3D right here and then press the number one on our keyboard or click in this little bubble to put it in the first viewer, we'll see that we have an image plane on this big old grid. And if we hold shift and drag with right click, we'll see that it's 2D. So we should, be able to bring a camera up to that and kind of move it around and just see what's what on that image plane. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So with image plane still in viewer number one, click on camera 3D right here and it will show up in this same viewer. So you can make all of your adjustments just like this with image plane 3D in viewer number one as long as camera is selected. So if we back this out, because as you can see right there, it's completely all the way through our image plane, and we don't want that, so we're gonna move it back. And that pyramid is what's going to be visible to our camera. So if we look right here, we can see that it's cutting that off pretty early, so we're not getting a lot of it, and that's what's showing up in our media out. But if we move that back, we can see more and more of it, and once those four corners are even, we can go ahead and call that the same size. So you can see right here that that background is starting to peek through again. So we're just gonna move that just a touch forward until that goes away. So now we have essentially the same framing and if we're careful-ish with our camera movements, it won't matter that there's anything behind this. And even if we do see it, it's just the same clip. So all of our colors should theoretically be the same. So with our camera selected, we see all of its controls. We have projection type, we've got angle of view type, we have actual angle of view controls, as well as focal length and focal plane. Focal plane is gonna dictate what's in focus and what isn't, like by distance. Focal length is gonna mimic camera lenses of this focal length, and angle of view is your angle of view coming out of your camera there. These are all gonna be used in a more in-depth camera video in actually like working with models and things like that so that you actually need different focal planes and focal lengths and everything. But for what we're doing today, we only need the tools in the transform menu. So we're gonna click on transform and we're gonna keyframe all of these right from the jump, just like that. And now, if we move forward a little bit, say to right here, say this is where we need to make our zoom, we're gonna go ahead and keyframe all of these again, just like that. And now, if we come a couple frames forward, we will start zooming right here, and we will end zooming where we are right now. So I'll just drag that camera in. We're gonna go and focus on that green button that's green right now anyway. And then if we watch that back, We'll see that it's right here and then it flies on in doesn't look great yet but it's gonna get better so we're gonna make another keyframe right here 
a few frames past where that last one was and then after a couple frames have passed there we're going to open the rotation menu in our top left we're going to rotate that thing so it starts looking more to the right and then we're going to move it over that way as well so we'll move that over and actually we need to turn that rotation back a little bit so that we don't lose that all right so now we go from this one to this one and then once we've been here for a couple of seconds we're going to go back to our main angle so we'll keyframe that and then we will go click on all of these dots in the middle to reset these once you've reset with all of the dots you're going to want to move that camera back out because if you remember earlier we are all the way through that thing when we're fully reset. So we need to back that out to the same spot where it will be able to see everything again. And now that we have all of our movements programmed and it does what we're looking for it to do, we'll watch that back just to make sure. Oh, we lose it there for a second. So that's up to you whether that matters to you or not. I'm gonna say that for this, it does for me. So I'm gonna turn that Y axis more toward the middle like that and we'll check that out again make sure that it yeah sure that's fine especially when we get to this next part so the next thing we're gonna do the thing that's really gonna bring all this together is open our spline editor back up and then go ahead and click on the checkbox next to camera 3d we're gonna get to a spot where we can see all of these so hold control and zoom out we're gonna go ahead and draw a box over all of those keyframes now we're gonna press shift s to smooth them and then we're gonna watch this back again. We might need to adjust a few of these now, but for the most part, it should look a lot better. So it zooms out a little too much, zooms in, very bouncy, moves over there, and then it zooms back to where it's supposed to go. So it only popped off of the frame one time. And again, maybe you like that. Maybe that's aesthetic to you, but that's not gonna be in this one so we'll make that a little bigger so now if we check this out let's see do we pop off we do so just make those little adjustments until you've got everything where you need it to be and then you'll be good to go so that's looking pretty complete we'll check that out in the edit page and since we use an adjustment clip it's going to render a lot faster than if we did this on the clip or as a fusion clip I don't know why it just does but you can see that all of those motions look very smooth pretty natural like either a human or a robot that was programmed to shoot that shot that and it just looks really good get creative with this guys i mean you're not limited to just the things that i showed you here and you're not limited to the things that i talked about here if you can think of a cool thing to do with this definitely do it it's a very handy tool and it can make some pretty sweet effects so let me know in the comments down below what you're going to use this for and i'll see you tomorrow